So we're getting ready for the hunt tomorrow. So my dad showed me some of the arrows that he just made up. And he's going to talk about the different heads that we use. Because a lot of people ask about that. Uh, first one's a judo. It's a glue-on. It's about 125 grain. Uh, just use your ferrule cement. Heats it right up. Takes it right off. These are good. Um, they got a good uh, striker point, And they have these little blades that help um, when you get in grass and that kind of stuff. If they hit the, a hard surface, they uh, won't skip no matter what. And they're extremely tough. The downside is if you get it in an animal and it runs off, it'll stay in the animal. It won't come out. Um, and I've lost these on prairie dogs. They've taken them down holes. I've had rabbits take them down holes. That's the downside. The upside is, um, and they're a little bit expensive, um, but they, they will kill. And they are very good. They fly really good. Uh, the second is what they call the hammer. It's kind of got a hex head with a little points on it. And in the inside, it's got a little tiny point. And these are also glue-on. They're about 125 grains. Easy on, easy off. They will go in an animal, kills them dead on the spot. They don't skip bad at all. Uh, even on hard ground, they'll pretty much stay where you hit. Extremely tough. I've shot them into things I shouldn't have, like metal fences and stuff, and they hold up pretty good. Uh, this is the old-fashioned HTM rubber blunt. They slide right over the head. Uh, they, they'll they wiggle a little bit, so there's a little bit of give on some of them. They'll bend to one side sometimes. Um, they're extremely hard. They will skip. That's the downside. Um, they're a little bit light, but they will not penetrate very well. But once they've hit it, uh, the damage is done. They hit very, very hard. And here's one I've de uh, designed myself. You take a 30... Eight special or a 357 blunt, uh, excuse me, the, the cartridge. And what I do is I put a 22 uh, bullet, which is about 40 grains. I take the bullet out of the casing, cut it in half, smash it with a hammer so it's round and it fits right in. And I put three of those in there um, to get up to 165 grains. And I've got some um, in the 140 range. You want at least 125 to make it worthwhile. Um, they hit really hard. You can see these have banged off of rocks and so forth, and they just, uh, they do really well. They penetrate well, they hit very hard, and they're cheap. You get a whole bunch for nothing. Um, you just remember to put the, the lead in first. You just pound the lead right down in here in a little circle. Just take a dowel rod, pound it in flat, and then put the arrow, insert it just with a ferro cement and uh, inexpensive and very hard hitting. Well, what type of fletching do you prefer and why? Okay, uh, good question. When we hunt in the winter time, lots of snow, so we use big fletching that will slow the arrow down. Um, they're good to about 25, 30 yards and then really start to taper off. But when they, they have plenty of power for that first 25, 30 yards, um, about a, most bows, it doesn't really matter. They'll zip really good. But when it hits the snow, you want something to help kind of stop it and slow the arrow down so they don't just skip under the three feet of snow you'd be looking all day. That's why we use these. Um, you can modify them. After a while, they start to get worn down a little bit. Um, they're a little bit noisy, but the short-range shots that we make on, on the rabbits uh, doesn't affect them. They haven't got time to, to duck them usually. I'll go anywhere from a 5-inch to a 4-inch. But typically, I only go the three fletching. Um, that's all that's needed to get that arrow stable. You really don't need four. That's just a little overkill. Uh, so three is fine. Again, you can use a five inch or all the way down to, to four inch. And I just use three. And it works really good. I use the light color because it shows up really good in flight for videos. Shows up really good in snow. Shows up really good in anything because that's not a real natural color. So if you skip one and it goes to the woods somewhere, they're easy to find. That's why we use them. And then I get a... <clears throat> oh, hey, Dad, do you have any other arrows? Just a couple. <laughs> I want to make sure I don't run out. You can't have too many arrows. These are my guest arrows. These are my hunting arrows. This is what a used hunting arrow looks like. Um, 
got some coloration to it. And then, of course, some mud. These haven't been cleaned up since last year. And then the other arrows, these are also used um, I passed through an antelope this last year. I do not clean them up afterwards. I just put the my tag on it and show and tell. Okay, you just get your shaft. If you to buy them from Three Rivers, you get them in in uh, lots of a dozen. And you go through and you look at the arrows. Decide you're always going to get a couple that aren't really straight. There's a couple ways to check straightness. One is to spin it. Just roll it, and you see a bubble. Another way is to put it on your fingers, these two fingers here, and spin it like that. And you can just feel it slide down your fingernails. It'll just slide. And then the third way, just look down the shaft and twist it. If it's bad, you'll see it a big lump in it. You'll, it'll kind of go off to one side or the other. So you set those aside, <laughs> deal with those later. So you take your shaft, and the first thing I do is I cut a knock into it <clears throat> using a, what they call a taper tool. They come in different sizes. One side will have it for the knock, and you flip it over and that's for your broadheads, field points, other tapers, and they come in different sizes. 11 30 seconds, 5 16 23 64 now you do is just insert it like a pencil sharpener, stick it in there, grind it through, and it'll peel off, and it'll look like that when it's done. And then the next thing I do is just select a knock that's about the size you want. So these are, I got, um, these are little kid arrows, and I got 5 16 11 30 seconds. And so that one would be a, probably a 5 16 So I'll just take a knock. And it inserts like so. All you do is use your punch type glue. And here's the key here. <clears throat> Just use one of these little ones. You put your glue, you put it on kind of sparingly. Just give it a little tiny squeeze. And you do the top half. Just go around a little bit like that. So when you put your knock on, it'll push the glue down automatically. And you just twist it. Voila, and it's on there. Then you just take the... Just spin it with a cloth, and there you're, there you're done for the for the knock. And if your taper is nice and even, that knock will go on there and be just fine. Give it 15 minutes, it'll be hard as a rock, and then it's ready for fletching. But before I fletch, that's how the knock goes on. <clears throat> Some people like to stain their arrows. Depends how long they think they'll live. Kid arrows, I usually don't spend much time doing that. But I'll stain it. And I just take a regular stain colors. I like the the uh, the dark. This one happens to be red oak. Kind of gives it really brings out the the actual grain you can see in the wood. So I just dab it with a little dab or a little paint, slide it on there, kind of grease it like this. I'll put it in a cloth and rub it up and down like that. I'll give it 24 hours to dry, and then I'll put my knock on. And you want to make sure it's really dry before you do that. And you don't want it to beat up. You don't want anything rough edges. And so you just kind of work the stain into the wood really good, and you just let it dry. And then it's ready for fletching. This is off the right wing. So if I'm a turkey, it's going to be like this. And so when it's it fully extended and you have all your wings out, they're going to look like this. And the way to tell is they have two sides. They have a real thick quill side. Um, and on this one, it happens to be right winged. 
And so your big quill is going to be on the left side. And so when you put it on your shaft, you want to make sure you have the proper clamp to allow you to do that. Now, since these are real, you can you have to trim them. You cut them, take a razor blade, and slide them down. So when you buy them commercially, they come in big packages of 100. And they look like this. They've already been trimmed right down the middle. They colored them. Most uh, domestic turkeys are white, so they color them. And so this is going to be a left wing. If this is my wing, it's going to be out like this. And the underside, or the, I don't know what the proper word for it is, but it's going to taper off to the left instead of the right. And so if you see the difference, here's a right wing. And there's a left wing. If you turn them over, you'll see that the prominent quill structure is on the inside. On a left wing, it's on the right side. On a right wing, the quill structure is on the other side, on the left side. And so it's you always kind of want them to be the same for the same arrow. So if I'm going to use right wing, I'm going to use all right wing. If I'm going to use left, I'm going to use all left wing. In packs of 100, but they're only so long. So I have a measuring tool here. For my big hunting arrows, I like to use 5 inch. Sometimes all the way up to 5 and a half, which means I can't get very much arrow out of here. So if I'm just using practice arrows or kid arrows, I go 4 inches. That way I can usually get at least 2 out of here and make it worthwhile. And so all I do is put it on a board, measuring, pre-measured. So I'll put four inches on there, and I'll just mark it. And slide it down, mark it again. Take some scissors. I want to make sure there's enough on the, uh, the fletching to put glue on. We'll just cut that straight. Cut that straight. On. Ching, ching. Clip back. And that piece will fall right out. Put that in your backup for later. Okay, we've got three arrows, or three fletchings. So we've got one arrow. So I'll take that shaft. And they're all going to be going the same way. They're going to be left wing. But I got a cock feather notch in my knock itself it's an index knock so when i put it on the shaft or put it on the string i can feel where it is with my thumb and then it'll always be in the same place so i will start my fletching by putting that point up and so it's flat like that in my fletcher and i'm going to put the clamp in i mark my clamps so there's the very same spot each time so when i insert the feather and just slide it down, put it right at the back end, right at the mark, just kind of set it in there good. Don't want to set it all the way to the bottom because sometimes you don't want to get too much glue in there. And speaking of glue, just take the cap off. Don't do a whole lot of squeezing on there, just let it kind of come out by itself. And I start at the back end. Just kind of walk it forward. You notice it's helical, so I kind of have to rotate it a little bit. I'm just going to dab it back. Okay, that's good to go. It's got a preset notch here and a preset notch here. The arrow's secure, so I'll just set that in there. Make sure that it's lined up, and I'll just gently lay it right in there. Kind of tap both ends just to make sure it's in there. Give it 15 minutes. Go get something to eat. Get ready for the next arrow. And I can do six at a time. I just go one after the other. One, two, three, four, five, six. And in 15 minutes, we'll turn this little clamp. Take that clamp off. We'll rotate the arrow. Put a clamp on a new feather. And we'll do it three times. And you're done. Because now, you've got your knock on, which you glue on with glue glue. Because you're never going to want to take that off for any reason. The opposite end, I might want to change it 
field tip to a broadhead. And that's how you want them to spin. See how that spins really nice? That means it arrow is straight and the alignment is perfect. That'll spin just perfect. So to make sure that stays on, what we use is some denatured alcohol in a burner. All it is is a, a, a stem that comes up through like a kerosene lamp. And uh, just make sure you get the yolk kind of, make sure it's wet, just fired up. So to put a head on, first thing I'm gonna do is what they call frail tight cement. It's just a hot glue, it melts. And I'm just gonna heat the tip of it. Do not get this on your skin or your clothes, it'll burn everything. It's just hot cement. And again, just like the glue, we put it on the top part. So we put our head on. Our head will slide the glue on down. So I just put a little dab around there like so. That's usually plenty. Okay, this applies to either broadheads or field tips. They're all the same. Take it by the plier. Make sure it's inserted securely and then put it right over the flame so it goes up through the center of your point. Get that kind of warm. It doesn't take a whole lot. Get that hot. And you just insert the point over the top. And as you're doing that, just kind of spin it it goes down. Now you might think it's on there, but it's not. So what I do now is I take the whole product, put it over the flame. It's going to heat up the point. And then as that glue gets hot, it's going to slide down, applying some pressure. Kind of give it just a second to cool. Some people use a, um, a moist towel and they just grab onto it. Real tough guys are used to their bare hand and just do that and just, we should only do that once. Okay, that should be on there. Check the spin. Spin's perfect. If it were a bad head, it'd be a real big wobble. You'd see the wobble. If it were cut, um, if we didn't use our taper tool correctly, if we didn't put the head on securely, it would wobble. I'll give you, an, I'll show you an example. We'll take this off real quick. So I'm done hunting with my field tips. I want to go, oh, let's go hunt some of broadheads. All you got to do is put it back over the flame. Keep some pressure on it in a twist motion. And it'll boink, pop right off. So I'll put a broadhead. And you saw how well that spun. If I put a broadhead on there, and it's not securely, it's going to wobble like that. You can tell it's not on there all the way. That's a bad wobble. All I got to do now, and normally I'd add more glue if I were going to hunt with it, but this is just to show you how to put it on. So I'm going to slide it on. Going to spin it just a little bit. By spinning, you got to make sure all your glue is evenly dispersed. I'll twist one more time. Give it a second to cool. Now. Should spin perfect. That arrow will kill anything. That is as good as you'll find in any aluminum, carbon. That is a true spin. Okay, and when you're done, always make sure you just throw that cap back on. And you won't burn your hand. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> okay, we got the first fletching done, so I'm just going to gently squeeze the top. And just kind of lift back like that. Voila. And then I'm going to rotate because it's got three clicks, and it's going to rotate to the second click, just like that. I'll just grab another feather. Set it in the groove. Add some glue. You do not want to over glue because you do not want it to stick to the clamp itself. Because if you left it there for an hour, the clamp wouldn't want to separate from the feather. They would become one. And to get it off, you'd almost have to tear it. So again, you just slip that back part in. 
lay it gently and you'll notice now they're going to match top and bottom get a little more pressure that's all there is to it take a few minutes and let it dry up and then we'll have the third and final feather going on there and so you want to make sure you know what your things weigh so that head weighs 108 grains and probably 125 if you put the insert in it. So that's a little lighter head. My field tip is going to weigh about 124 grains. Mm -hmm. They say 125. And then um, I'm going to have a couple other heads you can tell real quick. So you can see here is the hammer head. That's 143 grains, 145 which is really good. You want a little bit heavier head on that end, so that's 145. There's an MA3 broadhead. It's 126. Here is a 357-38 shell casing that hasn't been modified. So it's only 80 grains, so that's too light. And you want some power behind them. So here's one filled with full lead. And it's been beat up. That's why you want something in the end to really let it take the abuse. Because they're kind of tinny. But you put lead in there in the front. Now I'm up to 146 grains. Now i got a beefy beefy head that's going to work. A judo point. Is 100 grains. So that's the same as my broadhead. And then if you have a broadhead with a insert in it. It's going to jump up to 175 grains. Makes a big difference. Just that little piece of metal inside there makes that much difference. And so this is very helpful when you're trying to match your arrows. And the other thing you can use it for is actually lift your broadhead. You can actually lay your arrow right on there. That's showing 550 grains. And this arrow is spine four, should be 65. So the rule of thumb is when you're hunting, if I'm shooting a 50 pound bow, I'd probably want at least 500 grains. If I'm shooting a 60 pound bow, I'd want it to be between 550 and 600 grains, which includes my broadhead, my shaft, all my fletching, my knock, the total arrow you want in that 500 grain, 550, that's, that's just perfect. Um, if it was 400, it'd be too light for that kind of bow. So if I'm shooting a 40 pound bow, 400 grains would be just fine. And on up. So I could actually use a heavier head and get away with it because I have extra room to play with. So that's, a, that's why a grain scale is really helpful. I haven't used one for years, but now that I've got it, and you'll take all your arrows, and you'll find that they're quite a difference because when they sell the shafts, they're not perfectly the same weight. And you kind of have to, and it depends on your length. If you're 39, excuse me, that'd be long, 28, 29, or 30 inches, each time you cut that down, you're going to lose, lose some weight. So this is probably a 29-inch arrow because I cut most of mine. There's 28 and then 29 out to the end there. So that's very helpful to know if you want to keep your arrows consistent, especially when you're hunting. You want them as close together as you can get them. You don't want a 400 grain with a 500 grain because they're going to shoot different a little bit. I'm too cheap to buy uh, sinkers at the fishing store and do a meltdown. This is a little bit faster. You just pop the head off. That comes off. You do all kinds of things with the powder. I suggest you just throw it away. You could stockpile it and then have all kinds of fun. And you take your little piece of lead, put it in some good cutters like this, put it in the middle as much as you can, and snap it in half, like that. And then, hand me that hammer right there. You can hammer on a table, I wouldn't suggest it. So what I'm gonna do is go outside and I'm going to smack it on a cement retaining wall that I have. So, go out here real quick. Just 
set it like that. Get it nice and flat. And I'll put it over the top, like so. I use a little dowel rod like this. And just put it over the top of it. Takes it to the bottom. And it went down flat. Now I had another piece already. So I'll just put that over the top. Now that's in there flat, so there's two. And what did we figure there was about 80 grams before. Now with just two in there, I'm up to 106. So if I put one more in there flat, it's going to jump to 125, 123. So that's three pieces. And 121, 125 is great. I made some higher than that. But now you can just put your arrow and in, insert that just straight on because they usually fit the 11, 30 second shafts. And then I'll use the hot melt. Heat it on just like I would any other shaft to a point and you get yourself a blunt. That's all the exp expense you've made on it. Now it's ready to go. Now what I could do is I'll weigh it and I'll just write what it is 123 on the outside. Then that way I know my box when I go to use a blunt, what weight it is. Again, you can go all the way up to, I beefed this one up to 145. So that's got even 20 more. So I'll probably have four in this one, or I just cut the lead a little thicker. If you get it too thin, then you have extra when you pop it out. You can just throw away. Put a little dab of glue right in the front, like that. That keeps it from catching on things like bushes, and weeds, um, your arrow rest, and a little dab back here. You notice my feathers do not come off. They wear off, but they will not fall off. And then what I do is I'll take this file. Once that dries, I'll actually get another arrow and I'll show you. See, I've got my glue on there, and then I'm going to... Just take that and smooth there. And it'll take that feather down. Make it nice and smooth. So you can do this and not get cut. It just works out great. So that's a great. Slides down. Bingo. Now the cool part about these is that they pop out. And so it has one two, rotation for three, or if you want to do four flats for flu flus, it's got one, two, three, four. And so you can set it at any angle and then rotate four, put four fletching on there at once instead of three. And it just inserts, pops and then twists around like that. Pretty cool. There's two ways to do this. One, you get a shaft without a feather on there, put it in there, or you set it up. Now you can see that's obviously too small for that. But what do you know? It's set up for the four inch. Here's a five inch. And if I were to set it up for five inch, then I'd use this as my prototype and just move my wire till it matches that. Okay. And it's a regular size shaft. So that takes a lot of the work out of it. Otherwise you're just a kind of a guessing game. But the fun part is these are called shield. Shield is one that's cut back like that mm -hmm. a little bit. 
Traditionally, I like the shields, but you'll see that one arrow, the one I shot my very first deer with, that's called bar parabolic. And they come in all sizes too. Is that color? That was a four fletched. And that's what that is. That's a parabolic design. You can go four inch, five inch, three inch for kid arrows. This is called a banana. <laughs> and you could you could do that on this. I mean, a little creativity, and you can make your own. They're kind of cool looking. Uh, they're big. I don't know if they make that much noise or not. Um, and these are about your st only styles: banana, parabolic, and shield. Those are the design types. And then we call the old-fashioned no burn method. <laughs> It actually matches. That's not always a good sign. Now we're going to throw the glue on that one we didn't finish before. Yep. Now, this is the fun part. When we go outside and burn this, it's going to stink really, really bad for a minute. Let's see, that cord. Stick it right like that. You just spin it. One, two, three, pull it away, tap it. <coughs> Choke for a minute. Ooh. And what you have is a perfectly groomed kind of beauty. Beauty, huh? Now, one last touch. Take a little bit of razor. And won't need to do anything there. That is really good. If you got a little bit back there, and then I take the razor and go. And see how firm that is now? What was really wobbly. Now it's really out of the stand, what you want. Now you remember what I showed you on that with this thing? In case there's any burrs that you catch, just kind of run that. My friend is a perfectly fledged arrow. All I have to do now is put on the point. We're good to go.